Good afternoon. This is Decision 2016 live from Townsend School at the Margareta School District. We're live with the students of Margareta with the Sheriff's candidates in Sandusky County, Jim Consolo and Chris Hilton. Uh, this debate will last about an hour. It's being shown live at SanduskyRegister.com and it's available for demand viewing anytime after we're finished today. Um, the Sandusky County Sheriff's, there's one candidate who's not here, Sheriff Kyle Overmeyer declined our invitation to be here, so he will not be represented, but I, I believe he is still on the ballot. Uh, with that, I want to introduce Caitlin Nearhood, who's going to tell us about how the debate will proceed with the timing, and I also want to mention Jason Worling's here, he's the digital editor of Sandusky Register, and Melissa Tope, she's the Sandusky County uh, reporter for the Sandusky Register. And this debate series is brought to you by BGSU Firelands College as a public service. And we want to thank the college right off the bat for making this opportunity available to the community and to uh, the people in Sandusky County. Also, this program is uh, Decision 2016 programming, the election program is brought to you by Matthews Ford Lincoln in Sandusky. Matthews Ford Lincoln, if you're, in the, if you're in the market for a new car, please stop by there. With that, I want to introduce Caitlin, who's going to tell us the rules of engagement. All right. So first, you'll start off with a 90-second introduction, and then we'll go into questions from the register and from students. You'll both have 60 seconds to respond to the register and students' questions, and then you'll have a 30-second rebuttal if you want to respond to each other's responses. And then after that, we'll go into a rapid fire round where, where the time is cut in half. So you have 30 second responses to questions and then a 15 second rebuttal. And then your closing statement will be about 60 seconds to wrap it all up. And throughout the debate, I'll hold up 30 seconds, 10 seconds, and then when you hear the bell, time's up. And you can finish whatever thought you're here. So with that, I think we're ready to get started. And who wants to ask, ask the first question? And don't opening, opening, opening statements. Oh, opening statements. All right. And we'll go with uh, Mr. Consola if you want to start with our opening statements. Good afternoon. Thank you for inviting me, Matt. Um, my name is Jim Consolo. I am a lifelong resident of Bellevue. I am married to my wife for the last 28 years. We have five children together Matthew, attorney at law, Tiffany, a fifth grade school teacher, Joseph, who was active in the United States Navy nuclear program right now. I have uh, two 15-year-old identical twins and one grandson. Um, I have uh, 28 years of law enforcement experience. The last 13 of those were with the Sandusky County Sheriff's Office as a captain in the detective bureau where I investigated um, the majority of Sandusky County's most violent crimes. Um, I'm running for sheriff because I believe there's no greater honor to serve the public and to help people. I've always felt that way. I believe um, that the people deserve best possible service um, from law enforcement. And that hasn't been done lately at the Sheriff's Office. And if I get in, I'm, I'm going to fix that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Consolo. Mr. Hilton. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, again, thank you to the Sandusky Register, to Mr. Westerhold, and to uh, BGSU Firelands for sponsoring this. Uh, this, is, this is fantastic to have all these young faces in here learning about what the political system's about. Again, my name is Chris Hilton. I see a lot of familiar faces in the crowd. Um, I am currently a lieutenant with the Perkins Township Police Department. I've been there for about 20 and a half years. Um, I had uh, two and a half years of uh, education teaching experience prior to that. So I'm very familiar with this type of setting and like I said, this is a fantastic opportunity for you guys to learn and see what it's like to engage in the political process. <laughs> I am married to my beautiful wife Rebecca for 22 years. Um, I have three children, well I, I, I will say four and I'll, I'll point out a couple of those today. I have a son, Tyler, that lives in Bellevue. He works for Allstate. Uh, he and his fiance are uh, going to be giving my wife and I our very first grandchild in December. Yeah. <laughs> I have a 16-year-old uh, son named Noah who's sitting right there, um, and then I have a 16-year-old other son, Angelo, who's sitting right next to him. I also have a 15-year-old daughter who attends Margaret Kennedy, again, many of you know me. 
I've been asked numerous times why I want to be the sheriff of Sebastian County. It's point blank simple, guys. I wasn't happy with the way things were done. That's where my home is. That's where I raise my children. That's where I do my thing. That's where I live. That sheriff's office needed to be fixed. It needs help. I want to bring fresh eyes and a new leadership to Sandusky County. That is my purpose. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Lieutenant. Uh, and with that, we'll get started with questions from the audience. And I'm looking for the first question from the audience, not a relative. He's not allowed. <laughs> so we're going to walk over here. And a question right here. Do you have a question? Sure. OK. Just state your name and your grade. Excuse me, Bob, you guess. Hi, my name is Thomas Anderson. I'm a junior here at Margareta. My question for both of the candidates is, what are your thoughts on the decriminalization of drug use, and where does accountability begin for these people? It will start with you, Teddy. Sure. Decriminalization of drug use is something that's very popular in the minds of people now, especially with the opiate uh, heroin epidemic. People feel as though if we decriminalize certain types of drugs that we can get people help. And in an essence, I believe that is true. But the fact of the matter remains that drug use in this state is still illegal. So there are ways to combat decriminalizing while still holding people accountable for their actions in choosing to use drugs. I use an example that Sandusky Municipal Court does right now, which is the court system that I work with. If we arrest a nonviolent felony drug user, and I'll say a felony drug user, maybe a small amount of heroin, a couple of pills, something like that, we automatically place that person in jail because it is a felony. We no-bond them so that the judge can place some restrictions on what they do when they <coughs> step out of that jail. And by doing that, he has control over what's going on. From that point, we keep it at the municipal court level, and allow those people to get the help that they need so that we're not bagging them with felony after felony after felony and filling up our, and filling up our jails. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Detective Consola. I did drug use, uh, narcotics work for over 15 years. I have hundreds of arrests in narcotics. Um, I've personally seen how narcotics has um, affected our society and our community. We cannot allow it to be decriminalized. Uh, we're, we have an epidemic right now uh, with narcotics and uh, heroin that needs to be addressed. Uh, people need help with um, the abuse of it. We can't just throw them in jail and leave them there. Uh, they need assistance with recovery, and we cannot allow the decriminalization of drugs because I've seen it uh, deteriorate our communities. Thank you. Thank you, Detective. And another question from our audience. Don't be shy. Did you have a question? Okay. You state your name. I'm Dorothy. I'm like in sophomore high school. Okay, you're a sophomore. <laughs> I'd like to ask the candidates, have you ever encountered an ethical dilemma on the job, and what did you do Ooh, to address it? That's a great question. Uh, have you ever encountered an ethical dilemma on the job, and how did you handle it? Yes. And we'll start with uh, Mr. Consola. I don't tolerate dishonesty within the sheriff's office or, or in law enforcement. There's no room for it. If I encounter an ethical um, problem, I may report it to the supervisors or, or my sheriff. Uh, that's the only way to handle it. And um, there's just no room for dishonesty within, within uh, law enforcement, and I, I won't tolerate it. Uh, that's how I handle it. That's how I've always handled it. That's how I'm always going to handle it. Thank, Thank you, Detective. Uh, Lieutenant Hilton. Ethical dilemmas are. Uh, prevalent in society when it comes to law enforcement. We've all been seeing that on the national and state levels. I'm going to give you a very specific, very easy, very simple ethical dilemma that many police officers and many police departments face. It's going to sound kind of silly, but you have to understand that ethics starts at the bottom before it gets to the top. And what I mean by that is if you're not ethical on a day-to-day -day basis, if you're not telling the truth on a day-to-day -day basis, you cannot have ethics. You cannot be an ethical person. Example, years ago in law enforcement, it was standard practice for an officer to walk into a gas station, go over and get a cup of coffee or pop that'll cost a quarter, 50 cents, a dollar, and then walk out the door with it. 
He hasn't paid for that. It doesn't belong to him. Can every other can every other citizen do the same thing? Absolutely not. One of the things that we changed that my department was to not allow something that simple. We are no different than you. Honesty, ethics is applies to everyone, as does the law. So we have to, that's a very simple, very basic thing that's fixed. We fix things like that, things at the top take care of themselves. Thank you. Thank you, Lieutenant Hilton. And another question from our audience. All right. You're up. I'm Tana Parker. I'm a junior in Monroe. And my question is to both candidates. In what way have you contributed to the community outside of law enforcement? Very good question. In what way have you contributed to the community outside law enforcement? And I want to keep it going back and forth, so I think it's your turn, Lieutenant. Sure. Well, one of the first things that I've done for the last 17 years at this particular school system, which is where I live, is I've coached. There's no better way to reach kids, to reach people, than to be a coach. I started as a basketball coach here in Margaret in 1999, and I did that up until 2012. I'm currently a football coach here at Margaret High School. And when you talk about interacting with children and being able to have a positive effect, there's no better way to do that. Now, I have done other things too, and I'm involved in other things with my children and, and, and such. But when you start talking about trying to build people, there's no better way than to be an educator, to be a coach, and to have that kind of constant contact with people who are going to be our future. I believe that sports and, and athletics and band and the things that have occurred that, that go on in school systems every day are the best way to build people. Okay, so that's how I've been active. I continue to do it, and I will do it as long as I'm able physically and my job allows. Thank you. Thank you. Taylor, could you ask the question again as uh, Captain Consolos? Turn to respond. In what ways have you contributed to the community outside of law enforcement? I have to agree with uh, Mr. Hilton here uh, as far as keeping kids in that, uh, active in sports and uh, band, drama. My children are active in drama, golf, band, and uh, you got to keep the kids busy. Kids, you got to stay busy. Um, I currently work at Whirlpool Corporation where I work with a lot of young, young adults. And, I try to encourage a lot of them to better themselves with education and to um, look, look, look to advance themselves within the corporation. There's a lot of opportunities there, and I try to encourage them. I've encouraged a couple of them to look into law enforcement, uh, to better themselves. Thank you. Thank you, Captain. And another question from our audience. And are you ready? Sure. All right. My name is Katie Burbine. I'm in 10th grade. And my question is, in, in your view, what are the biggest issues facing the Sheriff's Department right now? In your view, what are the biggest issues facing the Sheriff's Department right now? And I think it's your turn, Captain Consol. Right now, the biggest issue is credibility and integrity within the Sheriff's Office. Uh, there, there, there's a lot of problems there that need to be fixed. The, the public's trust needs to be restored to the sheriff's office. Uh, there's cases that have gone unsolved that's unacceptable. The cases need to be thoroughly investigated. The victims and families uh, should at least have that respect that they get their case full attention. Uh, that's the biggest issue solved in the sheriff's office right now. Their, their, their lack of leadership right now. Uh, if, if they have a major crime right now, they, they don't really have anybody to investigate with any experience. So that, that needs to be fixed, and it needs to be fixed immediately. Thank you. Thank you, Captain. And Lieutenant? I wholeheartedly agree with uh, Mr. Consolo about the uh, credibility and integrity issues at the sheriff's office. That is what initially brought me to the idea of running for sheriff. Um, approximately three years ago that entered my mind. I kind of put it to the back burner because my wife was like, absolutely not, you're not getting into politics, which I totally understand now. But the things that I want to bring, the things that I want to bring, there's four guiding principles, things that I have been talking about since day one when I entered this race. It's professionalism, accountability, transparency, and honesty. 
Those four guiding principles are what's going to restore the sheriff's office to what it is. I want the sheriff's office in Sandusky Violent County to be the most professional law enforcement agency. I want the other six to look up to the sheriff's office and say, that's how we want to be. That's what I will bring. I've been doing it now. I have experience with it in my current police department. That is where we need to go. It is a path. Professionalism, accountability, transparency, and honesty to getting the sheriff's office to where it needs to be. Thank you. Thank you, Lieutenant. And a follow-up question from the register related, and be patient with me. The Sandusky County Sheriff's Dispatch Chief was found to be under the influence while on duty, but no internal disciplinary measures took place. A few years ago, a deputy with a history of domestic violence who was prohibited from carrying a firearm remained on the SWAT team and was subsequently involved in, a fatal sh in the fatal shooting of Brian Jones. Recently, the sheriff's lead detective was found to have leaked confidential files to friends who were not authorized to receive them. Reliable sources have told the register these instances are no more than the tip of the iceberg. When it comes to the dysfunctional nature of the sheriff's office, how did things get so bad and why are you the person people should elect to fix it and how will you go about fixing it? And we'll start with you, Lieutenant Hilton. Okay. I'm going to go right back to what I just said about my four guiding principles. Professionalism, accountability, transparency, and honesty. I am not a part of that system. I have spent my entire law enforcement career working in Erie County for Perkins Township. I want to bring a new, fresh set of eyes to that sheriff's office, and that is exactly what it needs. I am not a part of that system. I cannot speci speak specifically about why they haven't conducted internal investigations correctly. I can't speak specifically as to why someone wasn't fired or placed on administrative leave or why they were allowed to be laid to, uh, to keep on a, on a uh, SRT team where subsequently someone lost their life. I can't explain that because I wasn't there. But I can tell you this, starting January 2nd, 2017, if I'm the sheriff of Sandusky County, those things will not happen. They will be dealt with accordingly, they will be dealt with swiftly, and they will be dealt with justice Professionalism, accountability, transparency, and honesty. Thank you, Lieutenant Hilton and Captain Consola. In order to fix those problems, I will hire a professional, knowledgeable staff to address those issues. All those issues that Mr. Westerhold mentioned are, are completely unacceptable. I can't answer why the discipline wasn't done because I wasn't there. Um, it shouldn't be tolerated. It's not going to be tolerated under my administration. I, I demand honesty and professionalism. And anybody that does not follow that, I have no place in that department for them. Uh, I'm very knowledgeable with the sheriff's office. I haven't been there 26 years. There's uh, the sheriff's office is a complex operation. It's not like it's not like the police department. There's a lot of divisions within the sheriff's office. Uh, a lot of employees that you have to watch. And quite frankly, I don't think the, administrator, the administration was there. I'll be a full-time hands-on sheriff that will be there five days, six days a week. Thank you. Thank you, Captain. And a follow-up question to that. If you are elected, how long will it take you to reform the department to the point where it is functional, reliable, and responsive to families in the county? And we'll start with you, Captain Consola. I've already prepared myself in the event I'm elected with a professional staff that I have organized um, to deal with the problems. I know the people that work there. I know who they are. I, I know what they're about. Um, I, know, I know what needs to be done there. And how long? It, it, it would take probably, the first thing you have to do is get your administrative staff organized and set and start addressing the issue person by person. How long? Six months to a year, possibly, to get everything back in order. It's, it's, it's been out of order for probably eight, seven, eight years. And it's gonna take a while to reorganize that. Um, maybe less than six months, but it'll be done under my administration. I, I have no room for dishonesty. Thank you, Thank you. Captain. Uh, Can you repeat, repeat the question for me? <coughs> Thanks, sir. If you are elected, how long will it take you to reform the department to the point where it is functional, reliable, and responsive to families in the county? Well, 
reformation of the department is something that you cannot place time on. I don't know how anybody can say it's going to take six months or a year or a year and a half. It could take two weeks, who knows. But I'm going to tell you this. The day I stepped foot in that sheriff's office wearing that uniform, driving a marked car, being the sheriff of Sandusky County, everybody will be held accountable to treating people with respect and honesty, reliability, and all of the things that you mentioned, Mr. Westerhold. That will happen day one. As far as fixing the things that are broken, that are apparently broken, that from the outside looking in are broken with that sheriff's office, there is no timetable for that. And I believe the fact that I don't know all those people, that I have experience with this, with a, uh, a, a, a police department that went through something very similar to what the, the sheriff's office is going through now in 2008, I bring the experience necessary to weed those people out, to find the people that want to do the job and want they're there for the correct and right reasons. I will find them. There is no timetable. It may take two years. It may take four years. It may take eight. I don't know. Thank you. Any response? Reply? Uh, that's one of the things, uh, Mr. Hill. I, I do know the people there. I, I, I know who's not doing their job. Um, I know who may be dishonest. Whether I can prove it at the time or not, it's a different story, but I know who belongs in what position, who has the knowledge to be a detective, who has the knowledge and experience to be a road deputy. Uh, I'm not gonna tolerate nepotism. Uh, I won't tolerate uh, anyone treating the public with disrespect. It's not gonna happen, and I'm gonna come in and, and take care of it right now. Thank you, Captain Consolo. Uh, yeah, Lieutenant yeah, Hill. Yeah, you, you've been, you've been um, Retired for about three and a half years. Three. And, okay, and you said eight years ago that this place started going, so you had your opportunity and you failed to act. No. You failed to act, you were there, you were at the top, you were a captain, you were an actual command staff, administrative officer of that department, and things didn't get fixed when you were there. You chose to leave instead of staying to fix it. That is how I view it from outside. Thank you. Did you want to respond? You're wrong, Mr. Hill, because I was not in the uh, position of authority to do anything other than report. Uh, wrongdoings and that's what I did on every single time I didn't tolerate it you had your own problems where you were promoted by a chief that went to federal prison as a lieutenant no, you said nothing, lieutenant. You, said was, nothing. No. you did nothing in that department I wasn't a part of it and I you, you, you actually would like got to know I can tell you. Yeah. No. <laughs> okay yeah but I had a board of, of police chiefs he had nothing to do with it thank you gentlemen and another question uh, from the register as you are aware, multiple families have complained bitterly about the failure of the Sheriff's Office to properly investigate multiple instances of criminal behavior. Does the Sheriff's Office owe families, such as the Lamberios family, the Jones family, the family of Craig Bardeen, the family of Heather Bogle, and others, an acknowledgement of their complaints and an apology for these abuses? And we'll start with you, Captain Consola. Absolutely, these families deserve closure. They deserve a thorough, competent investigation, which in my opinion, on some of these was not done. If I'm elected to office, I will re-examine these cases. I will sit down with the families, talk to them about their concerns, and we will go back at it if necessary to get these families closure. It is absolutely unacceptable that these families were not given the full investigative techniques they deserved, answers they deserved, and I, I, I will do that if I'm in uh, as sheriff. Thank, Thank you, Captain Consolo. Lieutenant Hill. Again, Mr. Westfall, can you please re repeat the question? As you are aware, multiple families have complained bitterly about the failure of the sheriff's office to properly investigate multiple instances of criminal behavior. Does the Sheriff's Office owe families, such as the Lumberios family, the Jones family, the family of Craig Bardeen, and the Heather Bogle family, and others, an acknowledgement of their complaints and an apology for these failures? Unequivocally and without question, yes. And I will I relate a story here, and I might go past my 60 seconds, but it has to be told. In 2013, I was sitting in my house watching Dr. Phil about the Jake Lumberius instance. I went to school with quite a few of the Lumberiuses in this community. It's a, it's a Castellia, Margaret and Amy. And I sat in horror watching that. Now I had some ideas and I talked to people. And at that moment was the first time I thought about running for sheriff because that is not the kind of sheriff's office I want where I live. 
approximately two or three months ago, right in this building, right back out here, I talked to the um, father of Jacob Barry's Mike. And I approached him and I told him that I was considering running for sheriff. And he started to cry. And he chucked his hand, he put his hand out and he grabbed me. And if you know Mike, he's a very soft-spoken person. And he said, please, dear God, they need help. That man made me believe that I could stand here and do this. Those families do need closure, and they will get it. And it will not happen to any other families in Sandusky County ever again. Thank, Thank you. you, Lieutenant Hilton. Any response, reply? It's not just the Los Verdes family. There's other families. The Vogel family didn't get a proper investigation with the attention they should have. I have the experience to personally oversee those investigations if I'm elected as sheriff, and that's what I intend to do, to make sure that they are done right, the family's questions are answered, and they get closure. Thank you. Thank you, Captain. Lieutenant, three of the four cases that Mr. Westerhold uh, mentioned, mentioned, you were actually an active detective. Why weren't they done then? I was not assigned to them. You I said no, earlier then that I you, had no control. But you said earlier that you investigated all of the violent crimes in Sandusky County. Most, most of the violent crimes in okay. Sandusky County. Well, if, you knew, if you knew they were wrong, you should have done something. Thank How many of you investigated? Uh, would you no. like me to, I can tell have you. Have you ever investigated a homicide? Yeah, November. Personally, State, yes, absolutely. Personally investigated yes. a homicide? And you know what? That has nothing to do I've with being the sheriff. Tom Brady's a great football player. It doesn't mean he's going to be a great coach. <laughs> See the analogy? <laughs> Thank you, Lieutenant. I want to mention that this is Decision 2016 Live from Townsend School in the Margarita School District. This program is available for demand viewing and it's brought to you by BGSU Firelands College as a public service and we want to thank the college for making this opportunity available. Decision 2016 coverage at Sandusky Register also is brought to you by Matthews Ford Lincoln in Sandusky. With that, do we have another question from the audience? And we're back here. If you can state your name, as long well as you can, great with your question. All right, Bill Prince, and I'm a junior at Margarita. Um, what do you think the most important skill and the best skill that you have of being a sheriff or being a sheriff in this department? What is the most important skill that you have to bring to the sheriff's office if you're elected? And we'll start with you, Lieutenant Hill. The sheriff, by design, is the leader of an organization. And as Mr. Consola already pointed out, it has many facets. It has many divisions, it has many, many <coughs> parts. The sheriff, again, by design, is the leader of that organization. He's not the doer. That's not to say that he's not out doing stuff, because if anybody's familiar with the, the sheriff of Erie County, you know that guy's a doer. He's out doing stuff all the time, and I plan to bottle myself after that. The most important skill is leadership. Leadership is something that you're born with, it's something that you learn, it's something that can be taught, soaked in, and then passed on. Okay, I have been to all of the best leadership training you could possibly get. The FBI National Academy of Virginia is the pinnacle of leadership training in law enforcement. All of the coaching and all the times that I've spent with kids and leading them and getting them to get the best out of themselves, providing them with the equipment, the knowledge, the training, and the education to go out and successfully do your job, that's the most important skill. It's leadership and it's nothing else. Thank you. Thank you, Lieutenant. Captain Consolo. Leadership is the most important skill as a sheriff. Uh, you have to lead, uh, expect your men to lead by example. Uh, I have all the experience in the leadership of a sheriff's office. I worked the jail corrections division for four years. I worked uniform rule patrol for seven years and detective bureau for 15 years. As a sheriff, you have to be knowledgeable in all those divisions to understand what's going on, who's doing what. You have to understand how things operate. It, 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 again, it's very complex, and you need the respect of your men if you're going to accomplish that goal of leadership. That is not given to you. That is earned. And over my last 28 years, I've earned the respect of a lot of police officers and sheriff's deputies, defense attorneys, for the way I conducted cases. That's how I lead. I lead by example. I expect honesty out of my employees, and I will accept nothing less. Thank you. Thank you, Captain Consolo. <clears throat> and another question from our audience right here. 
Uh, I am uh, Clayton Sosa. I'm a senior at Margareta High School. My question is, what role does politics and or political parties play in the county sheriff's races, and do you think that they should play a role? Okay, we'll start with you, Captain Consola. Question. What role do county politics and party politics play in the election of a sheriff? And do you think it is a proper role? I do not think politics belong in law enforcement. Absolutely not. That is why I filed as sheriff under uh, as an independent. Um, I am not influenced by politics when it comes to law enforcement. You can ask anybody that ever worked with me. Um, no matter what I was investigating, politics didn't influence me. And I, I won't tolerate that as sheriff. Uh, unfortunately, politics does take place as a sheriff is elected. I don't agree with that, um, but that, that's the way it is. You can't always uh, have everything you want. I would prefer it not be politics, but if you have the right person in position, uh, you're not going to let politics affect you. Decisions and that I do not allow. Thank you. Thank you, Captain Consolo, Lieutenant Hill. Wholeheartedly agree with him that politics needs to be taken out of being a sheriff, but it is the cold hard fact that a sheriff is an elected position. It is also a very powerful elected position within a county. By pure definition, law enforcement is equal treatment for everyone under the law. And when you start throwing partisan politics, when I say partisan politics, I'm talking about Republicans and Democrats. I'm an independent, have been a lifelong independent, will always be an independent because I'm an issue-driven, uh, person-driven voter. I've never, I've never been a part of a political party. When you start talking about law enforcement, it has to be equal treatment, complete equal treatment. And unfortunately, right now in Celeste County, as, as Mr. Consola is very well aware, that the Republican Party is attempting to uh, nominate or appoint an interim sheriff for approximately 10 days before the election. This is where partisan politics are starting to take shape. This is where you have to understand that parties, Republicans and Democrats, want to have a certain amount of control over the sheriff's office. I'm glad he ran as an independent. I'm glad I ran as an independent because I don't want the Democratic Party or the Republican Party to have control over the sheriff's office. It needs to be somebody who will treat everyone under that law equally. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Um, and this question from the register, the current Sandusky County Sheriff faces 15 felony drug charges. Are you concerned as a member of the, uh, that he, as a member of the board directing the Sandusky County Drug Task Force, that this current sheriff has compromised that task force and has possibly compromised drug investigations in the past? And we'll go with you, Lieutenant Hill. I cannot speak to whether or not drug investigations to the past in the last two, three, five, six years have been compromised by Sheriff Overmeyer's uh, being on that board. But I will tell you this about the Sandusky County Sheriff or the Sandusky County Drug Task Force. It is currently being run under the prosecutor's office. The prosecutor's office gives them all the uh, information, the money, all of the uh, all of the tools necessary to go ahead and go out and do their job. The guy that's running that particular thing, his name is Mark Apple, and uh, I've only had the pleasure of meeting him once, and it was many years ago. But I was, he was described to me by someone that I wholeheartedly trust in law enforcement who worked with him in the DEA task force and other drug task force said he's a rock star, said he's a superstar, that there's nobody more honest and nobody better at investigating <coughs> drugs. Right now, the sheriff is where he needs to be, and that is outside of that realm. That Sandusky County Drug Task Force needs to be built up. It needs to find a consistent stream of funding. It needs more officers, and it needs to be the finest task force of any county in Northwest Ohio. And I plan on making it. Hilton Captain Consola. Currently, Sheriff Overmeyer is suspended, so he has no influence over anything that goes on right now. He's not even allowed to have any contact with any sheriff's deputies or uh, sheriff's department. Um, I've known Mark Apple personally for 31 years. That guy would not allow any drug compromises. Um, so as far as if uh, something was compromised that Mark Apple handled, Recently, I, I seriously doubt that. Um, Mark Apple is an outstanding officer, has been. He knows his drugs inside and out. He's currently the, the head of the drug task force in Sandusky County, which is operated by the prosecutor, not the sheriff or the chiefs. Um, so I can't answer if anything was compromised, if he had any knowledge or not. Uh, 
but I, I can assure you Mark Apple would have not compromised anything. Um, and we need to keep that task force up and going, whatever the means necessary. Thank you. Thank you, Captain Consolo. Uh, you, you mentioned that you're both independent candidates, but as we mentioned, there's a third candidate still in this race, Republican Sheriff Kyle Overmeyer. Are you concerned that the two of you could split the vote and Sheriff Overmeyer could be reelected, and if he is reelected, what happens then? And we'll start with you, Lieutenant Hill. Concerned? Yes. And I'm sure Jim is concerned as well about splitting the vote. But you can't step into something being concerned about splitting the vote. I didn't do this for me. I didn't do this for my wife, my children, my community. I did this for Sandusky County. If Sheriff Overmeyer is reelected, the people have spoken. It'll have to it'll have to work itself out. That would be a very unfortunate thing because I can tell you about myself. And, and Mr. Consolo, neither one of us have ever put ourselves in a position where we would be in trouble, indicted, arrested, or anything like that. We've got squeaky clean law enforcement careers, okay? we got squeaky clean law enforcement careers, and I'm not bringing any baggage, and neither is he. We're trying to do this for the right reasons, okay? We're trying to do this for the absolute right reasons. It would be unfortunate if Sheriff Overmeyer was, was uh, reelected, but again, with the appointment of an interim, the fact that he is suspended and will be until his court case is taken care of, at least the sheriff's office will be in someone else's hands and we can get it moving forward. Thank you. Thank you, Lieutenant. We have a question from Marcus. I'm sorry. <laughs> Captain Consolo, please uh, take all the time you want. Thank you, man. <laughs> when I started this uh, campaign in March, I filed as an independent. Um, I put my hands in the faith of the people of Sandusky County. I put myself out there. I have the experience, I have the knowledge, I have the training. If they choose to put me in there, that's their choice. If not, I can't help that. I'm doing the best I can um, to uh, give them the decision to put me in there. But if they don't, not, if they don't I, I can't help that. To the power of the people, like Mr. Hilton said, there's not much you can do about it. If Sheriff Overmeyer is reelected, um, I believe the interim sheriff will still to stay in place until January 2nd, at which time the Republican Party will meet again and decide what they're gonna do. Um, at some point, he's either gonna maintain his seat if he's reelected, or he's gonna be removed. Um, at that point, I believe they hold a special election. I'm not exactly 100% sure on that, but I believe that's how the law works. Uh, thank, thank, you. thank you, gentlemen. Uh, we have a question from uh, reporter Marcus Espinoza from NBC24, and thank you for being here today. Um, speaking of uh, Sheriff Overmeyer, with his lack of presence here, what are your thoughts on that, and would this not be a great opportunity for him to really speak to the people with everything that's going on? What is your personal reaction to him not showing up today? And we'll start with you, Captain Consola. I personally believe he should have been here to answer to the people. Um, it's not easy standing up here talking. Um, <laughs> and uh, I think he got off easy by not showing up. I think he should have came here, uh, took questions, debated with us so that the public can uh, inform themselves better of what's going on. But that was his decision not to come. I, I don't know. I haven't talked to him in um, quite a long, long time. So I, I don't know why he didn't show up. Um, but I, I certainly believe he should have. Thank you. Thank you, Captain Lieutenant Hill. Marcus, also, I believe he owed it to the people of Sandusky County to be here. Um, I personally have no issue with him showing up or not showing up because I'm more worried about Chris Hilton. I'm more worried about what Chris Hilton has to offer the, the people of Sandusky County. I'm more worried about Chris Hilton running his campaign. If the sheriff chose to be here, I would talk to him and I would say things just like Jim and I are speaking to each other. We would ask him the same kind of stuff. It is important for me to only worry about myself, my campaign, my integrity, my professionalism, what I want to do for the sheriff's office. I wish he was here. Both of us are going to represent thousands of voters. There are going to be thousands of people who are going to vote for us and him. He owes it to those thousands of people that are going to go in and circle the bubble and vote for him. He should have been here to speak to them again, to, to let them know where he's at, what he's doing, what he's thinking, and why he's continuing to run as uh, sheriff. Thank you, Lieutenant. And another question from our audience? I want to know how either one of you would deal with the 
deal with a coroner that does not show up to a crime scene to investigate and lets Sadusky County deputies rule deaths the way he does. And I, I might note that Christine Weedle is an administrator with Justice for Jake. Thank you for being here. How would you deal with a coroner who doesn't show up on a crime scene where he should be? And we'll start with you. I think it's your turn, Lieutenant Hill. The unfortunate part of law enforcement hierarchy in a county is this. It's the coroner and then the sheriff. The coroner, much like the sheriff, only answers to one thing, and that's the voters. Okay, so the sheriff can encourage his supervisors can beg, can ask, can plead, can do whatever they can to do to make sure that that coroner comes out to a scene. But in the end, it is unfortunate instance that the way the hierarchy is set up, the coroner is the highest, highest law enforcement agent in a county, and it is his decision. As the sheriff, you would hope that you would develop some type of relationship with that type of person, a coroner, who's that kind of uh, authority in your county, that if you called them, or if one of your supervisors or one of your detectives called him and said, hey, we need you, either he or a very qualified person who works for his office would show up to be able to render, render better decisions. Thank you. Thank you, Lieutenant Hill. Captain Consolo. Just to correct you a little bit here, Mr. Hill, sure. the anarchy is not corner is the highest uh, law enforcement officer in the county. He, the sheriff is the highest law enforcement officer in the county. The coroner is over the sheriff only on suspicious deaths. That is when he is over the sheriff. Uh, being said, you also have to understand, I went on hundreds of these uh, death cases um, where I talked personally over the phone to the coroner. The coroner is a part-time position. Um, it shouldn't be, but it is. A lot of times he's out of town um, and he relies on the investigator who should be an experienced investigator and, and not always is. And he, he relies on the investigator to tell him over the phone what's going on, if there's any question, you order an autopsy, um, have an autopsy done. And, and if there's any question at all, you do a full investigation. You just don't assume what it is what it is. Thank you. Uh, please. And also a correction, the hierarchy meaning based on the question that was asked, because she asked about specific deaths, uh, of deaths that were suspicious. That was what was asked, that's the way I expressed it that way. Let me ask you both, if there were a circumstance where a coroner did not order an autopsy and you felt an autopsy was necessary, what steps would you take to try to make sure an autopsy is conducted? And we'll start with you, Lieutenant. That's very simple, whatever steps are necessary. Whatever steps are necessary. If somebody needs an autopsy, if something is even remotely suspicious, it has to be done. And unfortunately, the sheriff is also considered a part-time position, and we all know it's not a part-time position, it is a full-time position, much like a corner should be. He is absolutely right, that corner should be working all the time. Now, what steps are necessary? I couldn't tell you. That's gonna be based on relationships, it's gonna be based on trust, that's gonna be based on policy procedures and guidelines that are in place when it comes to suspicious deaths. Those are the things that need to be put in place now so that there is an understanding that, hey, you know, when you spoke, when you speak to the coroner, you know, we've done this, we've done this, we've done this. We've already agreed that if we do all this and we're somewhere where we need you, we need a, an autopsy, you need to order it. Again, we can't force him to if it's a suspicious death, but again, if you build relationships and you do the things necessary and provide all the policies, procedures, and guidelines in place, and you say, hey, we've done everything we can do, we need you, we need this autopsy done, it should be done. Thank you, Lieutenant. And Captain Consolo. I never have a problem with our uh, coroner when I was at the scene of doing an autopsy, because if I told him an autopsy needed to be conducted, it was conducted. Um, unfortunately, there was some scenes that I wasn't called out to, that I should have been, I had no control over it. Um, whether an autopsy was performed or not uh, was not my decision. I was not there and had no knowledge of it. Certainly, some of them should have been performed that weren't. If I would have an incident where the coroner refuses to do an autopsy. If I ask for it, you go to your sheriff, and you demand it be done. You go to the prosecutor, you demand it be done, and you be relentless about it. Um, that, that's what you have to do. But I personally never had a problem with our coroner. If I told him an autopsy needed to be done, he trusted me, said it needs to be done, we'll, we'll have it done. Uh, Thank you, Captain. Thank so you. another question from our audience over here. 
here. I thought I saw a hand raised. So help me out. Who's raising their hand? All right, question from uh, the register. What would be your top three priorities for the department if you were elected sheriff? And I believe it goes to you, Captain Consola. My first priority is restoring the integrity of that department. Um, straighten it out, restore the honesty and integrity. My second uh, priority will be sitting down with the Drug Task Force, Mark Apple, and start addressing the drug epidemic. Um, give him whatever resources he needs to combat the epidemic that's going on right now because people, it's bad. It, it, it can't be ignored, it, it has to be addressed. I will give him every resources he asks for um, to do what he needs to get the job done. The third uh, issue I would address once the department is straightened out, we get the drug task force up and running and going, is I want to sit down with the families that have unanswered questions with their cases. Um, they have no closure. There are several families that are, are still waiting for answers. And that's unacceptable. That is absolutely unacceptable. And if I'm elected sheriff, sure, I will get it done. Thank you. Thank you, Captain Consolo. Lieutenant Hilton. The first thing is to put in an administrative team. When a sheriff is elected, he has the option to appoint people to certain positions. And then he can try to figure out what, he, what we call a rank structure. That is the first thing. And you have to surround yourself with people who are smarter, better looking, uh, more educated than you because that's what good leaders do. A leader can't do everything. He has to find people who specialize, who are good, and that kind of stuff. So the first one is a reliable, intelligent, well-educated uh, training set. The second thing is a manpower issue, and it's kind of an offshoot of what Mr. Consola is talking about with the Drug Task Force. I like it being run through the prosecutor's office, but I believe the sheriff's officers should be much more involved, and we're currently there do not have the issues and the manpower to do it. Lastly, it's going to be more of a generalized thing, and it's with his number one thing. It's restoration of the professionalism in our, in our sheriff's office. When people call 911, and they live in Sandusky County, and they're out in Madison Township, and they say, I need this, somebody better be there. Somebody better be there to take care of it. And all three of those things are interconnected. Thank you. Thank you, Lieutenant Hilton. A question about the media. What role do reporters play with law enforcement, and do you appreciate uh, the media being involved in reporting information from the sheriff's office, or do you disdain it? <laughs> what do you think about that? <laughs> we'll do I go first? Yes. All right. Disdain is a pretty rough word there, Mr. Westerholm. <laughs> the media is obviously a very, very important part of law enforcement. And guys, they're a necessary, don't take this wrong, Mr. Westerholm. The media is a kind of a necessary evil. They need us and we need them, and it's kind of a symbiotic relationship. I don't think, I don't disdain reporters, they have a job to do, much like I do as a law enforcement officer. The media and its, and its reporting of things, all I ask from the media is honesty and report the facts, which is what I believe they try to do on a regular basis. All the media asks from us is give us some information, let us know what's going on, lead us in the right direction, because if we law enforcement don't do that, we appear as though we're hiding something. And that's where that word transparency comes in. The media is absolutely 100% an important part of law enforcement because it fosters that feeling of transparency. People feel like, okay, this sheriff's office is doing it because the semester register and the Fremont News Messenger and NBC 24 are all there reporting the same thing, so they must be giving them that information and they're doing things the right way. Thanks. Thank you, Lieutenant Hilton. Captain Consolo. I do not look at the news media as a necessary evil. I love the news media. I believe they are a partner to me. I've used the news media numerous times over the last 28 years to help solve uh, crimes. Um, you sit down, you talk to them, you tell them what's going on, and they distribute the information out there so the public knows what's going on. I've never dodged the news media, never will. Um, again, I look at them as a partner to help us get that information out there. Uh, used them numerous times when maybe we didn't have some answers. They put it out there for us, the questions, and people read it and they called in and we were able to solve crimes, crimes with that. So I look at the news media as a partner um, to myself. 
Thank you. Thank you, Captain Tinsolo. And a question back here. Um, Will France, Junior Margaret. Um, how would you talk to the community here, Sandusky, or like just Sandusky County, with <laughs> with the media or without the media? So, what are the ways that you talk to? Them? How would you reach out to the community with the media and without the media? Both ways. And we'll start with you, Captain Consola. And what is? This? I'm sorry. What what situation? Do you in general, just community relations. How would you conduct the sheriff's office when it comes to community relations? What kind of outreach programs would you develop uh, to reach the residents of Sandusky County? The news media is very important to law enforcement. They get information out there for us. Um, any programs that we may have established, the DARE program, um, any, any program, they, they get that information out there. If there's crimes going on, the news media gets that out there for us, and people read it, and they start connecting the dots. We get phone calls on tips, thanks to the news media. Um, as far I, I, I have, uh, think the news media is a friend of ours. I uh, welcome them whenever we need some help. Obviously, there's times we can't release certain things to them, um, which we have to withhold. And hopefully, I, a lot of times I explain that to them and they understand. I've never had a reporter not understand that. Thank you. Okay. Could you explain that to me again? Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> to tell you, don't. Okay. To be able to, uh, to, 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 to answer your question, Noah, there are obviously the news media is a very easy way to connect with people in your community. In 2016, we use other methods to do that as well. Obviously, social media is huge, and especially with people your age. Unfortunately, I think many of you get your news from Twitter, from Facebook, from Instagram and Snapchat and everything else. But those particular social media mediums are essential in law enforcement to get our message out. The Facebook page that is developed at the, at the uh, Perkins Township Police Department is very successful. We have thousands of followers. We solve crimes. We get information out. People do business through that particular medium. We also use Twitter. Those two things are huge. As far as developing programs, I personally have developed a school resource officer program, a senior triad program for the township, a senior safe shot for the township, and I was a DARE officer for five years. So I've been involved in all those community things, and that is a part of law enforcement is being out there, being seen, and being visible. Thank you. And our last question, we'll come to you. Spring, I protested Mr. Consolo's candidacy or eligibility to be on. To the, both candidates? Question to both would, candidates? I, um, he might be able to, both of them might be able to. Okay. Just make a very neutral question. If, if you want to scratch it, that's fine. I think maybe that. we should scratch it and go to closing statements, just to be fair. Uh, because, you know, question over here? Yeah, let's, one last question here. Both candidates here. Uh, if either one of you guys were sheriff, if you're elected sheriff, would you be interested in hiring the other one or appointing the other one as your administrative assistant? That's a good question. And who wants to take that? Um, as an excellent question, Mr. Graber, um, but as I'm sure Jim will tell you and I will tell you, he is very qualified. He's got 20 years of experience and he's done a lot of things in law enforcement and he's very well known in some dozen counties. But he's got his team picked. Okay, he's got somebody that he wants to be his chief deputy, and he's got his team picked. Because you're going to surround yourself with people that trust, that you trust, and that you know. I also have my administrative staff uh, picked out, minus maybe one person, and some of that's going to depend on what happens in the sheriff's office when I do take office. But again, do I think I would be qualified to be his assistant? Absolutely. Is he qualified to be mine? Absolutely. Thank you. Captain Goodsoul. Thank you for that question. I have been asked that many times if I would be willing to take on Mr. Hilton as a chief deputy. I've been asked that too. <laughs> I'm sure he has been too. We're both independents. I believe we're both looking for the right thing here um, to straighten the sheriff's office out. Uh, like he said, I've always been a firm believer. If you're going to be successful, you surround yourself with knowledgeable, honest people that know what they're doing, and that's what I intend to do. That's what I have established already in administrative staff that I, I've come up with if elected. Um, 
with that staff, I have no question that we'd be able to return that sheriff's department the department around very quickly. Um, but I would never rule out the fact that Mr. Hilton might want to be a part of the staff if something comes up. I'm, I'm not uh, against bringing anybody from the outside. Um, if they know what they're doing, I, I want somebody knowledgeable, honest. Thank you. Thank you, Captain Truso. Thank you both uh, for taking questions from the students. And please give both candidates a round of applause. statements from each candidate and before we do that though please give yourselves a round of applause for the questions you have. and we're going to go to closing statements in the opposite direction as we started he who opened closes okay closing statements i've been asked many times over the last six months why I want to be sheriff. The bottom line is this. I have spent the better half of my entire adult life in service of other people. If given the opportunity to be the sheriff of Sunusky County, my home, I will provide it everything that it needs <coughs> at that sheriff's office. I will provide as much of myself and my staff and my people and everybody that I work with in that county to make sure that every citizen, every visitor, every person who works in that county can trust their law enforcement officers, their deputies, to the Sunusky County Sheriff's Office. I humbly, humbly hope that I am elected sheriff and will do the best job I possibly can for every citizen of Sunusky County. Thank you. Thank you, Lieutenant Hill. Captain Gonzalez. The reason I'd like to be sheriff is I absolutely enjoy serving the public. I believe there's no greater honor than serving the public and helping people. And in law enforcement, that's probably the best, um, besides a uh, law for fireman and a, a paramedic, is serving the public. Uh, I have 28 years experience at the sheriff's office. I started out the jail in four years, seven years uniform patrol, uh, 15 years in detective bureau. I worked myself up through the ranks of the sheriff's office. I have uh, done hundreds of cases, multiple homicides, uh, sexual assaults. Uh, I'm knowledgeable about how an investigation needs to be done. And I have all the knowledge, experience, and that requires you to be a sheriff in the sheriff's office. Thank you. Thank you candidates for being here today. This program is available for demand viewing at SandusKeyRegister.com. This is the Sandusky County Sheriff's debate at Townsend School, the Margareta School District. And thank you for uh, Marcus Espinoza, reporter from NBC24 for being here. Thank you very much. Please give him another round. Of applause.